What do you want a guy to do? I'm always looking at the sky, guys, but just always snowing, you know? So there's a the sky. How can I see anything? You can't see any clouds. You can't see anything at all. I'm moving around by, uh, right now, by the way. <laughs> you know? So that's why I put up moon footage. Some people come here and say, enough of the moon footage. No, I post what's out there, guys. If you get meteors for a week, it'll be meteors for a week. If we get asteroids, we'll get asteroids. No asteroids, we go through moon footage. Isn't that nice? Sucks. This stuff. <sighs> okay, so, great comments, Redberry. How's it going, bro, Redberry? Oh, I can't like, I can't love, I can't reply. Hey, Brandy Ferguson, uh, sorry I can't like, reply either. A 90 millimeter uh, refractor telescope, a star navigator, Mead star navigator 90 millimeter F8.8 refractor telescope. It has 30,000 objects in a database, it has 500 objects celestial uh, objects the planets the solar system has a, the a sky tour you uh, for the alignment you can do a two star alignment you can do a one star alignment you can do an easy alignment which is very simple uh, they talk about the handle to uh, at the back here the two handles that they're plastic yes they are but they're very solid plastic so that doesn't really matter it doesn't look like it's plastic either it just you know this here too um obviously many telescopes are changeable my celestron all these pieces are changeable if i want to i can put the four inch telescope sitting on this big mama this one uh, over here, stand here tripod. my four inch that i've always used is a focal length of 1500 millimeters that beautiful telescope so that's the 1500 millimeter one that i've always used i've Taken so much good care of it. Good backup telescopes, understand? This has good contrast in it, and I really want to give it a try. And we have some more good news after we take a look at this telescope. We received our parts. All the parts for the Big Mama Glorious Telescope is in. So we are going to be able to, when the weather permits it, bring it out. The minute it's beautiful outside, I'm going to bring it out. It's winter here. You can bring a telescope outside in the winter. There's ways of protecting your telescope, and it's what I'm going to be doing. Um, I'll, we'll have to be a little choosy on the weather to be sure that it's not too down minus in the minus degrees Celsius. But aside from that, we're going to be able to go up on the moon very often. Guys, I was so excited to be able to tell you guys, the community, the contributors, and all who are here contributing in the comments, etc., that we have the stock now to be able to put this mom outside. I also got the T-ring adapter for the camera. The camera is set up right behind me right now, and we'll look at that. So this telescope is not necessarily interchangeable when you think of it. You can't put any other scope on here unless it's the exact side, size, which wouldn't be worth trying to buy one for that reason. But here, if you loosen this up, well, now you have access to your telescope putting it as far out as you want or back. There's a certain angle that you're supposed to put it in. And once you get it set up, well, you're ready to go. You lock it in place. It, ah, it's not plastic, guys. This is solid metal, actually. The screw is plastic, though. <laughs> so you gotta be careful. Very solid features on the telescope, anyways. And it's a very good telescope. You hear online that they say that it's wobbly. I think all telescopes, guys, are wobbly at that size. Well, the tripod, obviously, they said it's not solid, but, you know, it has rubber on the bottom. I sort of appreciate that. I find it sticks better than that one I have because my 4-inch one is really, it slides, you know. But as a tripod, I mean, it is a, a wide enough metal, but it's not very thick, but it's not bad. It's actually better than my Celestron 4-inch telescope, but... You know, these small telescopes, you don't get any um, really solidity, you know, and a little bit of wind will these will shake a lot.
I have um, given with it. There's a 3x Barlow, so that was a plus. I got this for $150. So of course, it's not brand new. Yes, it is because in reality, it was never used, and it wasn't kept in the dust. It was put away, dismantled. So everything that I got so far, like this is for photography of the moon, and this is also capable of getting stars. I might want to try to see, but it's the adapter now I'm going to need, right? The T-adapter. If I want to try a DSLR, I'd like to try a DSLR or a solar imager on this and uh, to see what it is. But of course, we're going to try the 14-inch telescope. So let's go see the DSLR that I put already in the back, the T-adapter up. And I'll show you the power source, the wire, and I haven't powered it up yet. Um, before powering it up, I believe I should be outside to do that in case it starts spiraling around. This, hey guys, Big this is the big. Nikon D3400 DSLR that is brand new. I put it in the back of the telescope. So I got the T adapter, the T ring, I took the three inch um, at the back off the knob and exposed directly my, my T adapter to the back of my telescope. I didn't, not putting a diagonal, I'm not putting anything. If not, obviously it wouldn't fit. This is a pretty large uh, piece around here. It's three inches. And um, this is for us to start the prime focus photography. Then after that, we'll try with the eyepieces. We'll try, at one point, I'll go get the assembly kit to get the F2 going on the CGXL. Guys, we've got the wire, the power source, everything's ready to go. Now all we need is the weather. It's only a matter of time. Don't worry about it. So this is gonna make amazing photos. There's a T-adapter. The DSLR attached directly to the three inch ring so at the back. Of the, the DSLR is on there, that's there. So we're ready to start up the telescope, for example. These are the mirror locks. You have to unlock these mirror locks to be able to turn the focuser. Once the mirror locks are off, you can turn the focuser, which is on the other side here, to be able to focus in. And then with the remote, put the timer on to be able to take an amazing shot with the DSLR, and I can't wait to try it. So once you're in focus, you can relock the mirrors. Now this is a pretty big telescope, so we don't have we don't have much shade, guys, on this telescope. I'm telling you, it's a beautiful. I'm telescope. going to show you guys the power source, um, the wire that's connected to the power source, how it sits on the bottom of the telescope, and uh, maybe tomorrow, if weather permits it. No, we're not going outside at all. It's a snowstorm here, but. I do want to fire it up maybe tomorrow, take a look at it and stuff like that. I'm not going to fire it up right now because there's a 10 hour charge. I just got the charger, but I was excited for you guys to see uh, the telescope in action. So guys, we have a couple of objects I want. I wanted to talk to you guys about this. Thank you, right? The ones who contributed, the ones who are supporting me, everyone that's on this channel, guys. Look what we, look what we got. I'm so thankful. I'm so grateful. We're gonna get so much on the surface of the moon. I mean, my technique is really good with the four-inch telescope. So now we're gonna be able to use a 14-inch telescope. There's other options on the 14-inch. We're actually closer than 3,910 millimeters. We'll be over 4,000 millimeters with this telescope. And it now it measures now more than 38 inches long, the optical tube, by 14 inches wide. It's going to be amazing. Um, here it is, guys. I went and got uh, the power tank, uh, the exact um, Celestron uh, device that they recommend to operate this. What's the difference? The one I was going to order at the beginning was um, bigger, and it lasted less long. It was three or four hours charge. It's not going to last. If I want to do three or four hours of telescope, uh, this, the power tank, is what I got. And 
it's going to be able to power my telescope for 10 long hours. And this is exactly what I got. So I'm going to show you the object. It's not a big object. It's really not a big device. It's right over here. Here we go. So this is the power tank. Okay. It's not big at all. It's really, really not big. You can see underneath here, I'll show you where it goes. This is going to sit basically on top, uh, underneath my telescope. And the wire is right here. So, to show you. This wire is the wire I have now. Two ends, very normal. But you see, guys, look what it replaces. When I bought the telescope, this is what I had. So obviously I could still charge it with um, a power source, but it has to be the right amperage, the right DC amperage and voltage. But instead of having this, I got this now. It replaces it. So this is going to go inside of the telescope, right here, the back. I don't know if you guys can see that. Oh, we'll get closer. I'll show you where it is later. It's just basically at the bottom of the motor. And the other end will go inside the little latch here this is pretty impressive guys this okay operates that okay when you think of it it's a tiny object there are other plugs for USB that I have also here at the back I'll show you guys right in here other plugs inside so it's pretty pretty cool it's a must right so this is going to sit inside of this I don't dare plug it in starts moving all right so there we go this is going to sit underneath on the leg of the tripod of the telescope so no wires and no computer because now instead of having the solar imager which i used to use when i had the solar imager i had to have the computer close by so i had to hook up the computer and from the computer to my telescope i had another wire which was going from the solar imager inside of the telescope to my computer but now we can take this outside we don't have to have any wires and this wire is going to sit underneath the telescope so it's not going to be in the way at all. I want you guys to see what that awesome camera looks like. So we're going to lock that like this and we'll get in a bit closer. See what it looks like. There we go. So now we got and this oh, yes, is what I took all my moon shots, my moon f uh, video live footage with. And it, it does a job. It does a really good job. But say to yourself now, I could have put this behind the telescope, but I decided instead of that, we'll put the DSLR. It's going to be amazing. This, I can't wait to try it. So guys, I hope you're really happy with the new DSLR. That the power source is in now. So now... All we have to do is wait for the right temperature. Once the right temperature comes, I'm going to get up on the moon. You guys don't have to be worried about it. I know some of you are going to say, why aren't you going out? Why aren't you going out? It's not always snowing in Canada, but it's been snowing for like 10 days, one centimeter a day, all the time snowing. There's no sky. There's no sun at all. So it doesn't matter. We have the equipment, guys. We're going to make it. We're going to make something happen. For sure. So we're all set. The telescope is all set. Tomorrow I'll get it going. Um, once it once it's uh, up and uh, well, it's already up. But once it's operational, once I plug it in, I'll show you guys what it looks like. So thanks, guys, for the newcomers, the people just arriving to the channel. I can't thank you guys enough for the support, for the comments, for the help, um, connecting with all of you. I mean, listen, we have great equipment now to go up and see what's on the surface of the moon. And I will be uh, studying the, the deep sky objects on how to obtain them. Uh, you know, going through various processings. The My techniques, there's stacking, which I really don't like stacking. And there's other ways to do it. I want to get a direct shot with this DSLR camera, that telescope, and even the MEAT telescope. It'll be worth doing a bunch of tests. Well, and this one, I'm going to be able to put the solar imager behind the MEAT. Uh, that I have in the four inch, my, my 1500 millimeter Celestron. So this should make nice photography. It's f8.8 um, on the scale of photography. This and f11. Transferable. The big mama can be transferred into uh, f2 photography. 
So what does that do? It changes the depth of field, the field of depth, the view widens, the contrast, the definition. It's going to be something else. So thanks for watching, everyone. I'll catch you guys on YouTube. And um, I have some time off of work, so I'll be spending a lot of time on YouTube, like usual. Website contributors, channel contributors, the people, thanks to them, we have a 14-inch telescope that is now ready. Here are the new contributors. The list goes on. And these are also people that are part of this community. Thanks a lot, guys. I love you for it. So how is everyone doing tonight? This is great, great news. We are on our way to the moon and into deep constellations to see many deep sky objects. Guys, take the time to check out WSO YouTube channel. He's finding out what other people are finding in the sky.